Hi, it's great to have the opportunity to speak to RAPS today at your convention. I'm Janet Woodcock, and I'm head of the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research at the Food and Drug Administration. And we have a number of initiatives that folks at RAPS have been interested in, in me speaking about. The first one is what are we doing with labeling, both uh, new drug labeling and generic drug labeling? Are there any initiatives going on? Well, we have been looking into revising uh, old labels, as you know. Ideally, labels should be a living document. They should be updated as more scientific information is gained over time. But this has, in some cases, been neglected. So many labels are still in the old format uh, that starts with the chemical structure, <laughs> and many of them don't have the newest scientific information within them. So uh, we are looking at ways to uh, upgrade these labels, and particularly the Oncology Center of Excellence is starting a project for old oncology drugs, which many of them have very outdated labels. And of course, these are very toxic and important drugs still uh, to have the current information in. And another activity we're looking at is uh, generic drugs, where it's very difficult to thoroughly update the label when the reference drug has been withdrawn. So we are continuing to work on that issue. Now, another area I've asked to talk about was the uh, new uh, drug review program modernization effort. Uh, people often think of this as a reorganization of the Office of New Drugs. But in fact, the reorganization of OND is really in support of an overarching modernization of the New Drugs Regulatory Program. And so I'm going to give you a few uh, items about, of what we are doing in that modernization. So first, and very importantly, we're planning to restructure and streamline the review process, starting with the pre-market review process, particularly safety, but moving to the entire process, and then going on to the IND process. And this will be um, intended to utilize uh, very rigorous methods, more uniform methods, and front load a lot of the review activities, sometimes even before filing, so that we have plenty of time during the end of the review period to work out all issues with the company, including if there's REMS or post-market commitments or other things that need to be done. And we are beginning pilots on this right now. We'll be introducing it as, as pilots, and then um, as we learn, we'll be spreading it to the rest of the group. Additionally, we're doing a project on uh, updating and streamlining how we do documentation of the review process. And there we're starting again with the pre-market application review. We are looking at writing a single, relatively brief, issue-based, multidisciplinary review document covering the entire assessment outside of the quality aspects. The quality uh, will continue to be a separate uh, document and assessment. That is under um, the purview of a working group right now, and they will soon be beginning to pilot uh, writing this document and, and seeing how it goes. As many of you know, uh, we have been piloting something called the Uni Review, which is kind of a version 1.0 or forerunner of this uh, streamlined multidisciplinary document that we're working on. Another part of this uh, relook is to take a very strategic evaluation of how we currently manage post market safety and see if we can't modernize that process. This is going to take longer than the, uh, uh, many of the other efforts we're working on in the uh, new drug regulatory modernization project, but I think it really will pay off in the end. Of course, post-market safety itself is going to change over time with the introduction of new data sources, new methodologies, real-world evidence, and so forth. 
but we need we are looking at our internal processes and how we manage these signals right now so stay tuned for that over the next couple years now to move on to the OND reorganization part of the modernization as I said this is intended to support the modernization process it's not an end in itself and what we're going to do there first is we have formed a virtual policy office and that uh, office is uh, that function is now occurring and probably the most visible uh, manifestation of that is the bulleted guidances we are putting out there's been a very enthusiastic response both internally and externally to bulleted guidances and I would imagine that we're going to continue the same rate of getting guidances out as we have started with the bulleted guidance process but OND policy more broadly will be working on a lot of policy issues that are pertinent to the new drugs regulatory program a second effort we're working on involves centralizing project management. Right now, project management is, uh, resides in the divisions, and each one has its own uh, certain ways of doing things. A centralized project management organization will allow us to have a more uniform and repeatable processes for our, all our transactional and regulatory process work. However, we will leave the teams intact and the project managers you've been used to working with will likely continue to reside within that division. Another part of the effort is to flatten the organization. Um, some of the divisions have gotten very big and our goal is to have divisions reflect a subspecialty or orientation so that each division will have a group of diseases that it's responsible for that are very coherent and, and fit in a subspecialty. Uh, and hopefully they will mainly be grouped in offices that will also reflect this orientation. And so there'll be a synergy across uh, the divisions and an ability to uh, share some of the workload. Now I have to stress that all of these changes uh, and reorganization are simply a proposal. And these uh, have to go through a very sequential process uh, within the government that includes multiple level of sign off and agreement at multiple different levels. So it is unclear when we would achieve this uh, reorganization, but it certainly isn't probably within the next six months. It, will be uh, in the best case slightly longer than that and there could be modifications that are instituted as various levels review the proposal. Uh, other activities that we're proposing or actually starting to implement within the Office of New Drugs include better support for the scientific uh, reviewers and project managers. So this is better administrative support and we're working on that. It's better technical support. We're bringing in uh, statistical programmers and uh, data analysts who can assist with the data review and we're developing much more structured uh, safety data review up front that should uh, really help the medical officers uh, get through uh, the safety review in a much more timely manner. We're also including more general support. Uh, some of you who may have come in to meet with us have met our new contractors who arrange logistics for meetings. This has already helped in our meeting management and um, making sure we have rooms available for everyone and preventing some of those unfortunate times when uh, rooms are double booked and so forth. So we're providing support for these activities uh, so that they can be done more effectively and our scientific staff can work on what's most important for them. And then finally, in the Office of New Drugs uh, Reorganization, we'll be changing some of the immediate office functions. We propose to set up a regulatory science group that will be working on functions such as qualification of biomarkers, surrogate endpoint activities, patient reported outcomes, clinical outcome assessments, bioinformatics, and so forth. These all are regulatory science activities. In addition, 
will be um, having an operations office reporting into the immediate office, and that will manage the project management and the administrative functions, as well as some of the support functions that uh, allow O&D to operate. So that's a brief discussion of what we're going to do or hope to do in our modernization of the new drugs regulatory process. Of course, we'll look at a number of the other ancillary processes, such as the IND phase, which takes most of the time and effort, as well as uh, things like the automation and IT support that is needed. And they're very uh, active initiatives going on in those areas. I was also asked to give a hiring update. Um, we are having s some difficulties with hiring uh, individuals into the program, but uh, the Office of Commissioner has launched a pilot program for hiring, and that has recently started up and is having some good results, so we're very hopeful. In addition, we hope that use of the 21st Century Cures authorities that we were granted will also enable us to hire people and get people on board more quickly. Uh, the uh, RAPS organization asked about turnover in the center, and it's true, we have lost some people. However, I think we have a nice bench, and this provides opportunities for uh, other uh, staffers to stretch their wings and uh, see how they do in these positions. And finally, I was asked about PDUFA 7, sigh. <laughs> um, is FDA thinking about PDUFA 7? Well, frankly, we never stop thinking about PDUFA because by the time we end one PDUFA and are into the implementation, we do have to be considering on the horizon the fact that there will be another uh, renegotiation of the program. However, we aren't thinking about it in specifics and, uh, and, and so forth. It's simply we are aware that this will be coming up. The years do pass and we get to another one. So I think I can assure you that when the time uh, comes, we will be prepared. So it's been a pleasure talking to you about these different topics. As usual, what uh, CEDAR is doing is very dynamic, uh, very active, and we have multiple different initiatives and efforts going on. And I hope that we continue to fulfill all our mandates and uh, continue to serve the American people. Thanks very much.